Next time on Ding Dong Games. After being banished by Lord Helix, Kabuto, Lord Dome, has vowed to escape Hell and extract his revenge. Lord Dome escapes his prison and pays back the Hoenn region in full for forsaking it. Can Kabuto overcome the trials of Lord Helix? And will it have its vengeance? Don't move in the next exciting episode of Ding Dong Games. Welcome back everyone to another special video. It's finally happened. My previous Lord Helix video has gotten a direct sequel. That video is by far the best one on my channel. So if you haven't seen that already, then what are you waiting for? Do it! Do it! Now you've witnessed the epic journey of Lord Helix, but this epic saga is not over yet. Unknowns to you all, during the events of the previous journey, Lord Dome, or also known as Kabuto, was banished by Lord Helix to the Shadow Realm. Hey. Lord Helix's sadistic power struggle led it to believe that Lord Dome was trying to overthrow it, which led to it being forsaken by Hone as a false god. We don't know if his accusation was true or not, but either way, Lord Dome is now pissed. Instead of rotting in the Shadow Realm, it vows to break out and take revenge on the world and the one god that had wronged it. After channeling its full power and anger, it creates a portal that allows it to escape and return to Hoenn. Now its journey begins. Being an ant compared to Lord Helix, Dome has to grow in power to be ready. It starts off by destroying all the early game challenges, but so far, none of them really challenge us that much. The main difference is that, unlike Omanyte, Kabuto has to travel through Sapphire rather than Emerald. Side note, I've never actually played Sapphire or Ruby before. I've only ever played Emerald in the third gen, so this is actually really new to me. The only rules of this journey are the following. No battle items except held items. Kabuto can only be used in battle. And most importantly, no ancient power. That move is seriously overpowered. But it turned out that as it got banished, Lord Helix had stripped Lord Dome of all of its godly power, weakening it considerably. This puts it at a huge disadvantage, as it cannot use that trump card anymore. Kabuto also has good base stats, but they're arguably outclassed by Lord Helix. It has very high physical attack and defense, very low HP, and decent in everything else. It's arguably more balanced than Omanyte, however, the lower special attack stat is unfortunate, as water and ice moves are really great. This journey will be harder than the last one, but it begins now, after beating our first challenger. It makes its way and beats down all the challenges by just spamming Scratch. There was one trainer with a Shroomish who almost beat Capital, but miraculously, it missed two stun spores in a row, which is madness. It's madness! Letting me win. Nothing much here is worth showing. It does learn to move Absorb, which will be very important as it can destroy rock types and heal itself up. Be sure to get the Miracle Seed afterwards. With this, Kabuto challenges the first boss of the region, and the dome is not satisfied here in the slightest. Absorb destroys Geodude. Also, as Kabuto had a bold nature, its physical defense was super tanky, making it a beast. It whips the first gym leader and carries on. The next boss, however, was not easy at all, and pushed Kabuto to its limits so early on in the run. Even after it trained, Rock Tomb can't deal enough damage, and Scratch is its only offensive option. Not even the first Pokemon matchup goes down. At this point, there's just no point in retrying. Dome goes straight to Slateport to continue training. But on the way there, it ran into the heretic Mei again, who tried to stop us. And succeeded. Grovel was too strong. Whalemur weakened it, then proceeded to play in its ass and spam Splash. It gets defeated again at level 26, but at least now, the Dome is ready to defeat Broly. Especially after learning Mudshot and getting the Soft Sand item. This time, the boss goes down in 4 attacks. Both Pokemon get 2 hit KO'd, so now we go to take revenge on the Heretic Mei. Side note, I noticed that the gyms are different than they were in Emerald. Overall, they are a bit easier, but oh well. This time, Kabuto chases Mei off, as it is now strong enough to 2 hit KO Grovel, and it uses the same strategy that Lord Helix did. Use Rock Tomb to outspeed Grovel, hit it, lower its speed, then hit it again to finish it off. Now Capital is strong, and is eager to finish what it started, and begins to attack the inhabitants of Hoenn, causing death and destruction. The 
Jennifer, Jim challenges Lord Doom. Lord Helix struggled here, but Lord Doom was ready. With its superior attack and speed, it used Mudshot to great effect and beat the boss's first two Pokemon. Now it can easily beat Magneton. However, I sense a divine intervention as Capital missed two Mudshots in a row and got defeated, which is crazy, Hacks. That's really unlikely. My theory is that Lord Helix tried to purposely stop his attacks from landing. This angered the dome greatly. You played us like a damn fiddle! He pays back the gym leader Watson dearly, as next attempt, it did not miss anymore. After this battle, I can only imagine what Dome did to punish Watson. As it carries on in its quest, Lord Dome does some specialised EV training for special attack and forms Spindles to do this with the Macho Brace to greatly buff his attacking power. As it cannot use ancient power anymore, special attack is just more valuable, so it's better to focus on that. Now the Dome's power is frightening, even without ancient power. Most of the inhabitants of Hoenn flee and hide from this evil threat, as it takes out its anger on everything around it. Come to think of it, this is exactly like Final Fantasy XV Episode Arden. The Forsaken Hero has become a true monster and seeks retribution for those who have done him wrong. It proceeds to destroy every challenge before it. Archie was first, though his Sharpedo did deal a surprising amount of damage to Gabito. Unsurprisingly, Gym Leader Flannery literally didn't do anything. It's weird how it still doesn't even have a water move yet. Next Gym Leader was really weird though. Norman has two slackings and the first one couldn't damage it much at all, but Capital couldn't damage Slacking that much either, so it just became a really drawn out battle of attrition, which the Dome eventually won. Then an even stronger Slacking was out next, but for some dumb reason it kept trying to spam Focus Punch and ended up doing absolutely nothing to Lord Dome. After this, Vigoroff the last Pokemon was out and that went down very easily. This really was one of those battles where the AI could have easily won but then because it's actually moronic. At least it can now use HM Surf now. However, this next challenge was hard. The heretic may attack Lord Dome again and it tried to stop her Grovile, but it was just far too strong. Leaf Blade completely destroyed it and it can always take a hit from us. Lord Dome loses at least twice at this level and decided to train to level 52 and maybe now is powerful enough to stop his threat. The outcome was just the same as before so it decided to train again for two more levels and now it is just strong enough to win at KO Groville, ending this threat as May retreats one more time. The rain powered up Lord Dome, just like it did for Lord Helix, letting it transform like the Deep Sea King from One Punch Man. The late game is now approaching, but at one point, Lord Dome tries to tap into his ancient power, just like Omnite did before it. But unlike Omnite, Kabuto was not successful in doing this, it still hasn't regained its lost power. It also tries to transform prematurely to unlock its latent powers, but no, it's clearly not ready for this power yet. It has to continue training to do this. So next up is Gym Leader Winona, whose flying types are no match for the power of Capital's rock power. Her whole team gets destroyed, and her gym vaporized. Before we carry on, Lord Dome finds me, and this time it attacks her for one final battle. It still gets defeated once, narrowly by our nemesis Grovel, but next time it returns with a new technique, TM Ice Beam, and uses this to utterly destroy me once and for all. Now she can take Lord Dome's place in the Shadow Realm. The final battle is near, and there's no turning back now. The penultimate gym is next, and due to the laws of physics, Lord Dome must enter this battle with an ally, being Zigzagoon, but due to sadistic nature, it always knocks out Zigzagoon as it's not seen as a worthy ally. This however, leaves it vulnerable to a combined attack from the cosmic rock Pokemon Solrock and Lunatone. Fool! If you let your guard down, they might do the fusion dance, but alas, Lord Dome gets defeated twice here, but this time is clearly outmatched. The double fusion attack is too much to handle and the dome has no choice but to enter the hyperbolic time chamber for even more power. Once it returns at a higher level, it is now strong enough to vaporize the next challenge 
with his newfound strength, smashing both opponents with its mighty surf, leaving one more gym badge to go. Before this gym badge can be claimed, the Heretic's Team Aqua have to be destroyed, so the leader Archie also gets sent to the Shadow Realm, without much of a challenge. However, this triggers the awakening of the legendary Pokemon of Hoenn, Kyogre, who goes on a rampage as well and threatens to destroy all of Hoenn and even threatens Lord Helix. Lord Dome will not stand for this, as there can only be one ruler of Hoenn. Kakaroto is mine! Nobody touches him! Not even you! It belongs to Lord Dome to destroy as it pleases, not this pretender Kyogre. More importantly, nobody else is allowed to threaten Lord Helix. Lord Dome wants to fight it at full power to settle its own conflict. After reaching Kyogre, Dome unlocks a portion of its full latent power and destroys the pretender Kyogre without much of a fight. Now the realm of Hoenn is safe, for now at least. No time is wasted as a final gym leader is imminent. The first few water Pokemon on his team are no threat at all, but his final one, Melotic, was hard to deal with. Kabuto now is Giga Drain, which is a great grass move, but Melotic is just too bulky. It can recover more HP than it loses, giving it a large advantage in battle. This does not look very good, but eventually Melotic gets too greedy and tries to attack more rather than healing itself, leaving its defences open as Dome is just able to finish it off. With that, every gym badge is claimed, and there is one final challenge to go before the epic final showdown between Lord Helix and Lord Dome can go down. First, the champion must be defeated. Kabuto makes its way and clears the victory road of any heretic who wants to stop it. As it reaches the Pokemon League at level 68, where the final battle is right before it. It's powerful now, but unfortunately, it's not ready yet for the champion, which is made clear as Kabuto goes straight for the first Elite Four member, Sydney, getting overconfident of its power and not preparing first. A fatal mistake. Despite this, Sydney was still easy. Surf and Ice Beam knock out every Pokemon in one hit. Sharpedo survives as Dome goes for Rock Tomb in its arrogance, while also preserving PP, but Sharpedo takes advantage of this and lands a surprisingly powerful Surf, hurting it greatly. But that's the first Elite Four member being anyways. The next one, Phoebe, is up next, and this time, Dome's hubris is apparent, as it loses to her team. It could have won, but realised it did not have enough PP to last through the whole Elite Four, and it just kept trying to preserve PP. This did not work. To overcome this challenge, one last big training session will be required to raise capital to the appropriate power level. Also, a stockpile of Lepaberries and Elixirs will be required to make sure it has enough energy to last throughout the whole challenge. Now that the training is complete, Lord Dome returns to win this time at a drastically higher level. This time it is ready, and is not fooling around anymore. At level 82, Lord Dome completely destroys Sydney, even more so than before with his massive power. It gets some payback against Phoebe, and punishes her greatly for humiliating the Lord. Now that PP is no longer a problem, it goes all out and smashes her team in no more than two hits each. Sableye tries to postpone its inevitable demise by using hacks, and it does get lucky as Rock Tomb misses, but eventually, Phoebe's team was also destroyed. Next up was Glacia. She wasn't much of a challenge as the matchup here was favourable for us, as her whole team is weak to rock types. Her first two Pokemon go down in one hit, but her stronger Celio barely takes one attack. It uses Attract and tries to hack it again, but Lord Dome was having none of this. As Celio uses Dive to try and take a cheap shot, Capito has no time for this cheap trick and uses Surf, destroying Celio while it's still underwater. The fool! Her Ace Walrin is out and gets 2 8 KO'd by Giga Drain, but not before landing a powerful Surf. Glalie also goes down in one Surf, ending this fight. The final member, Drake, is upon us, and here Lord Dome has a great matchup. It knew these Dragon type threats were coming and brought Ice Beam just for this, making this challenge a joke. Everything on his team got destroyed by Ice Beam, except one Flygon where Dome held back and used Surf instead, which Flygon was just able to survive. It didn't hurt Dome anyway, so that was easy. Capital? More like Carnage Capital, if you know what I mean. Carnage At last, the Elite Four challenge has been defeated, and there is one more battle to complete before the Lord has completed its journey and can reach his ultimate goal of finding Lord Helix. The champion will not be easy, however. He will be ready. The final battle is underway, 
in Capital is off to a great start. Steven Skarmory, Agron and Claydol all go down in one surf, but Cordeli was monstrous and defeated it several times. At this level, it can always take a hit from Dome and destroys it in return with Giga Drain, being 4 times super effective. After several retries, Capital gets defeated every time. It just doesn't have enough power to beat Cordelia at this level without Axe. However, after returning a level 85, it now has just enough power to win at Kill Cradley without taking a hit. With the champion's trump card gone, he is now powerless as his remaining Pokemon go down, though his Metagross did hit very hard. With this, Lord Helix has now beaten every challenge of the Hoenn region and is now ready to confront Lord Helix again. But Omastar does not come. In its anger, Capital unleashes its full power and unlocks its final form, transforming into the terribly powerful Caputops. Now its intent is to cause as much death and destruction to Lord Helix's realm as possible, in the hopes of drawing it out from its kingdom in heaven. Capitops returns to the Pokemon League it had just defeated and this time it vaporises it completely. Even the champion's Cordelia cannot touch Capitops at all. After vaporising Evergrand City in its entirety, Lord Helix finally descends from the heavens. My form is justice, and my form is the world. Worship me, give praise unto me, the almighty and divine. All hails. The final showdown is now upon us. Vilified, betrayed, and tormented, Lord Dome has completed his own ascension and has become a true monster. It now has its one chance to end Lord Helix, but Omastar's godly power is beyond all understanding. Can Lord Dome have its vengeance, or will Lord Helix destroy it once and for all? Don't move in the next exciting episode of Ding Dong Games. Oh my god that was an intense video, this was insane. Join me in the near future for part 3. That video will be dedicated to seeing who is better between Omastar and Capitops. It will be an analysis video that's completely different from anything you've seen on my channel, so stay tuned for that. Also, I have now hit over 1000 subscribers, so seriously, thank you guys all for the support. I love you all. I have new unique content planned, so I will look forward to seeing you all again. Until next time, this is Ding Dong signing out.